Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. Today, I am going to put this into this. That's right, I am bringing my doorstop, sorry, my Terrace 80 MC10 into the 21st century with composite output. So I purchased this because it is really easy to put in. There's no case modifications required. It just means taking out the RF can, putting it in, it comes out through the same hole. So that's all there is to it. So we've got to take the MC10 apart and get to doing some soldering on that board. But before we do that, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. PCB Way, where you can get PCBs printed starting at only $5 for 10 boards. The composite upgrade that I'm putting in my MC10 is the perfect type of project that you can use PCB Way for. If you have something similar designed, then starting at only $5 for 10 boards, you can bring that design to life. So why not visit PCB Way today at www.pcbway.com for fast and reliable service. So the first thing we have to do, obviously, is get the motherboard out of the case. So if you've never taken an MC10 apart, it's quite simple. There are four screws here, 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 and here. Of course, that one is the one that would be under the warranty sip, um, sticker if you've never taken your MC10 apart before. And the one that's under the warranty um, sticker always kind of sticks in there, so. Now, it's been a long time since I've taken this apart. Just gotta remember what I have to do here. And when you're lifting the top off, you have to be very careful because there are two ribbon cables in here that need to be disconnected. So they're clipped into place under there, so don't just pull them out. I'll show you in a second. As you can see, two ribbon cables. It's got wires coming out of them. And they are clipped in with these, so you got to open those up to get them out. And if you've uh, watched my videos before, you know that this is the 8K mod that's in here. So this is not an original 4K MC10. It's got the 8K in here. I did have to do a repair where one of the uh, lines should have been grounded, this line right here, but it was actually not. So it caused some problems when I put the uh, expansion cart on. All right, now I just gotta find a screwdriver. And there you go. It's just three screws. So here, here, and here for taking the motherboard off. And you can see the screw is still sticking through there where the That's the screw that's held in by the sticker there. All right, so what I have to do is I have to remove the RF can here. Oh, I guess I gotta take the uh, shield off of here too. So it's these annoying little shields. I just gotta go find a pair of pliers, I'll be right back. 
So for taking the uh, back shield off of if it's still on there as this one is, there's little clips located all over the board. It's just a case of squishing them together. and pushing them through. So those clips look like this. There we go. That is all of them. The shield is off. Ooh, definitely some rework's been done on the bottom here. I guess that's got to do with the 8K mod. That is not very pretty of uh, soldering. Anyway, um, what I'm interested in is I've got to desolder these here and then the big blobs here to get that RF can off. Okay, I've got my soldering iron heated up, my fan's ready to go. So we'll start with these, then move on to the big guys. And there we go, with a little bit of persistence, the RF can is out of there. Yeah, one of these days I'm actually going to invest in an in actual desoldering gun, but uh, for now, this is still working for me, so. Just goes to show that, uh, yeah, it's nice to have some of these uh, really nice toys and stuff, but you don't necessarily need them. So, all right, as we can see, uh, this is the board right here. I'll put a link down where I got this from. So, uh, yeah, quite simply, it just drops right in there. These pins line up with the pins that are on the RF can there and they get soldered into place and then it's just got the one clip for the front here and then you are good to go it's as easy as that so let's put this into place there Now, does anybody know where I left my solder? Yes, I'm very organized. Huh. Solder. All right, here we go. Very important to keep the fan going so I don't breathe in the fumes. That's all the soldering that's required. Now, clean up the board a little. There 
and we're ready to try this out. Now I'm not going to completely put this back together because I want to test it first. But unfortunately you have to actually put this board about 90% back together because yeah you got to get the keyboard hooked up and everything because of course there is no joystick port or anything on these. Okay, the really fun part about putting these back together is getting the keyboard connectors back into place. Unfortunately, you cannot see what I'm doing here, but the pain in the butt is getting all of the little wires that are on the end here to line up to their respective spots. Number two is in place. All right, well, we're just going to reconnect with the screw that's still stuck in the case. As you can see, the new connector lines perfectly up there, so it's perfectly up right there. So uh, yeah, let's go plug this in and try it. So I've got my MC-10 here ready to be hooked up. It is uh, ready to be turned on and tested out. What you need to hook it up is a three and a half millimeter jack on one end going into two RCA jacks. So it's as easy as the uh, three and a half millimeter just plugs into the back here. Now I'm using a relatively cheap cable here. It's just one of the Amazon basics one, but it works really nicely, fits really nicely. So uh, now I'll just hook that up this end to my uh, actual capture device, my cheap little capture device that I have, and we'll see how this looks. All right, there we go. Everything is hooked up and it is time to turn on the power switch and see how this looks. There we go. That is a picture and it is about as good as a composite picture can look. So let's make sure I didn't mess anything up. Still got my 8K of memory there. All right, so now it is time to pair this with something that I've done a video on before and it is something that really makes this computer so very usable. And I am talking of course about my MCX 32SD. This is a great little device to have with the MC10 especially now that it is so easy for me to capture video from this. This little device I've done a video on before, I will of course put a link to that, but it adds extra memory to the computer, it allows you to use an SD card. So let's take a look at why this computer is now so much more usable. So we'll look at first, um, that Pac-Man Machine Language one. That is the game that most people will actually show you on the MC-10. It's one of the originals, but it is truly a good version of Pac-Man. So here it is, introducing you to the characters, and it's just the arrow cluster here that you use. Great version of Pac-Man. All right, well, that's one of the reasons. Let's look at another. 
Another of the reasons that this is really nice is Inufuto Games. I don't know if you've heard about them before. I have talked about them in some of my videos. They are currently making a cross-platform um, thing. So they release games on like 50 different platforms at once. One of them being the MC-10. So there are all kinds of games, new games, that you get to play on here. Like, for instance, this one, which you may recognize, it kind of looks a lot like one of my favorite games, Mappy. So this is a great little game. A lot of fun. So Inafuto has new games coming out all the time. As a matter of fact, um, he's got some games out that I don't even have on here yet. Now there is one more reason that the MC-10 is an amazing little machine. That other reason is Jim Gary. The man is truly a machine when it comes to games for the MC-10. He has, I've got hundreds of games on here from him. He ports games to the MC-10, generally one, two, sometimes three per week. There's text adventures, there's uh, arcade style graphical games, there's everything. Okay, so let's take a look at... So like here, this is the C file. There's a lot of games there. So let's look at one that I've been playing around with lately that I quite enjoy. Oops. I'll just uh, jump ahead because this takes a couple minutes to render. And here we are. So, um, basically it is describing here that this is a dungeon crawler game. So, let's begin. And it is controlled by the arrows. And eventually, I will find something to fight here. Oh, found a knife. Pick it up. Yes. Eh, yeah, we'll leave a knife. I like my new knife better. Yes. You found a knife. Oh, so I lost my fire of the depths, and I didn't kill the guy. So now I have two knives. Anyways, it's a fun little dungeon crawler that I quite enjoy. Ooh, a broadsword. Yes. Leave a knife. Attack with the broadsword. Yes. The battle's a draw. Yes. You lost both weapons. Oh, no. All right, well, as you can see, lots you can do on the MC-10. If you're a fan of the MC-10, then chances are you're also a fan of its big brother, the Tandy Color Computer. If you need things for your color computer, then might I suggest visiting Retro Rewind. What kind of things can you get? You can get yourself a 6309 to replace the 6809 in your Cocos. You can get capacitor kits, a Coco SDC, a diagnostic cartridge. They'll even install your 6309 or change your capacitors for you. So visit Retro Rewind today at www.retrorewind.ca and use my discount code of CRT10 at checkout to save 10%. 
there we go. That was a pretty easy modification. And the great thing about it is no case modifications needed. Um, I've now got an 8K composite ready MC10 computer, which makes this a lot more usable, especially for the fact that uh, if you've watched some of my previous videos, I had a whole setup where I ran the uh, RF out of this into a cable box, out of the cable box by composite into an upscaler. From the upscaler, it went into um, an, a little HDMI monitor, and that's how I uh, traveled with this. Now, um, I can still use that upscaler with the HDMI monitor, or I could use an older monitor that's got composite, so the choice is mine. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot and are greatly appreciated. But uh, yeah, now that uh, I've got this out and ready to go, I'm gonna go play some games on it and I will see you next time.